how is it that Secure Sockets Layer, or TLS, uh, whichever one that we are using, uh, perform this magic that allows us uh, commerce, um, uh, secure email access on websites, uh, signing on to uh, and authenticating ourselves to uh, our home systems and, and various and sundry other things. Okay, step one, a link is established to the secure server and the client, that's you, sends a hello client message including the client's SSL version number, uh, the cipher settings, and a random number. Now, uh, notice that we haven't done anything um, secret yet. There, there, you know, we haven't established the encryption. Um, this is uh, just at this point sending a request, uh, doing a little bit of handshake with regard to um, the settings that we want to use. You know, uh, which version of SSL uh, are we using, SSL or TLS? Um, uh, you know, what, what is it that we want to set up? So, um, and a random number. Now that, you know, the random number is random. It's not giving away any information. Um, it is chosen in as random as possible a fashion. Uh, when uh, you know, when we you know establish or, or attempt when we send the request, um, so it's it's not something that's going to be reused. It is not something that's giving away any information about us. Um, and it was at this point that the uh, the Netscape. Uh, implementation of SSL originally fell down because um, while it was using 128-bit um, random number uh, which is going to become part of what we do to negotiate our connection it chose it um, as I noted on the the basis of system date and time and therefore it only had 4,000 bits of entropy in it so it really wasn't a truly random number uh, anyways step two the server sends back a response um, so server hello the response includes the servers public key certification uh, the SSL version number, cipher settings, and a random number. Now, notice that it is at this point that is it, it's sending us the public key certification. And notice also that we, as the client, did not send a cipher key certification, a, a public key certification. We don't need to have that. The public key certification that the server sends back is going to identify to us that this is a legitimate business, that this is a business that has been certified by one of the certification authorities for which we have the keys, the public keys built into our browser. And notice, it's their public key certification that is sent. And again, that is public. It doesn't matter whether anybody has it. Okay. Now, the step three here. The client, that's us, can now authenticate the server. So it sends an encrypted message using the server's public key. And remember, when we're using the server's public key for the encrypted message, the only key that can decrypt that message is the server's private key. So, it's encrypted. It's encrypted with a public key. 
Everybody can know the public key, but nobody can decrypt it and nobody can mess with it. So the server decrypts the message. That is used to generate the session key. Uh, the secret for HMAC, if we're using that hash message authentication code, and uh, the initialization vector. Uh, so, you know, we've got the initialization vector that we're using to uh, start things off and um, uh, again ensure that we're not using an electronic code book level of uh, protection where somebody can tell if we are sending identifiable or identical packets of data um, but we have a uh, uh, you know a, a couple of things that we're using to uh, uh, to generate a key and to uh, encrypt things just a little bit more cryptically uh, making it harder for the attackers to figure out what we're doing ah. and then uh, okay uh, step four the client sends a message encrypted <coughs> with the session key and uh, that closes the sort of client part of the handshake of what we're doing here. The server responds with a message encrypted with the session key uh, and that closes the server side. So now we've got the session key. Um, we've got the initialization vector. Uh, we have uh, generated a key for the um, HMAC, if we're using that, um, for authentication purposes. Uh, so, we have a secure session. We know that we are dealing with a legitimate business because of the certificate and the certification of the business. And we have uh, then a secure communications channel that we can use to identify and authenticate ourselves to the business. So that's what SSL is setting up and that is how it does it.